Well, hello. I know it's been a little while, so I apologize for that. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about how we winterize Signet. Here it is in October of 2020, and it's time to winterize. Uh, so a couple of things. I think what we'll do is we'll do this in a multi-part series because I started recording some of it already, and man, it's really long and boring, uh, unless you're totally a boat geek. So I think we'll break it up a little bit. So first, let's talk about power. So here we are on a cool but decent October day and you can see what I did yesterday is I ran these two white power cords these are 30 amp cords from our pedestal into the boat and into one of the windows and you'll see what that looks like in just a second here you can see the two 30 amp cords coming in each 30 amp cord is on its own breaker on the pedestal however the pedestal only has 100 amps so we still do need to be pretty conscious of how much uh, we are using. In the past, we've split to a different pedestal. One of these 30 amp cords would go to a different pedestal. I am trying not to do that this year. I don't want to hog other pedestals. Um, we also do not have currently a boat in the slip next to us, as you saw uh, previously. So that boat that we've had in the past is not drawing any power from our pedestal uh, directly behind us, so I think that we should be fine. So what we do here is each 30 amp cord then goes to a splitter. And these splitters then have a standard three prong 15 amp um, outlet on them. So I then run the heaviest duty cords that I can find around the boat. So this is a 14 gauge uh, it's only 15 feet long though, so I'm not too worried about it. I don't like running extension cords, but it's just kind of a necessity. So you can see that this heater we have right here, this is plugged directly into the 15 amp uh, splitter, but I do have to run these cords. So here I have a 12 gauge heavy duty extension cord that runs up and over. And I kind of wind it through here and I'm very conscious, especially when I first hook things up, of making sure that the um, cords are not getting warm at all. They, ha they can get a tiny bit warm as you're running a heater off of them, but generally they don't get warm. And if they start to get hot at all, that's a problem and we have to be very wary of that. I also, every connection I coat with a dielectric grease. It's something that the guys from the Smart Plugs uh, recommended. So I do have some of that and everything gets a really nice coating of that in, at every connection so that I make sure that all the connections are very good. But here you can see we have a small heater in here. This heater runs on low all the time. We never turn this heater up to high. For a couple of different reasons. Number one, I do not want to overtax this extension cord. Number two, because we are splitting, and I'll go back to our splitters here, because we are splitting from this 30 amp, and you can see that this one is plugged in here, and then that gets shared with this one right here. Okay, so this one right here is this guy, which is plugged directly in. Now, when we do get times where it gets really cold, we will run this thing on high. This is the safest of all of the heaters that we have. So when it's really cold outside, this one will run on high and we feel fairly confident because it's plugged directly into the splitter. It isn't running off of an additional extension cord. You know, obviously it's coming off of cords, but these are very heavy duty 30 amp and the Furion, um, splitters that I have seem to work really well. I'm very happy with the, the Furion brand. Um, they are significantly less expensive than um, the standards that uh, we all know. Okay, I'm gonna stop here for a minute. You might notice that I'm wearing a different shirt. Um, <laughs> in the recordings that I had done before, I was noticing that it just wasn't coming together quite that well. I also started this before I had all the heaters hooked up. So now I'm gonna give you the tour of how we actually have them all hooked up, right? So we're gonna go from front to back on the boat to make it easiest. So here we go. So as you saw, we have this small little heater in the front uh, bedroom. That also, we keep the door open a little bit to this uh, head 
because that allows the heat to get inside the head and keep it nice and warm in here. Um, another thing, although I don't have it closed at the moment, is we use these drains and we keep them closed because you'd be surprised how much cold air comes in through these drains. In fact, I can feel the cold air coming in right now. So we try to keep these drains closed in the winter. Um, it really does make a difference. So then from the front, we move back and we have this uh, Sarki heater. These things are great, really like them. Low is about 900 watts, which is a little bit higher than most of the other styles. Uh, most of the other styles run at 750 watts. So these give you just that little bit extra um, heat on low. And this thing, these things really put out a lot of heat. Uh, we like these fan styles because they really move the heat around quite a bit. Then of course we move up to our radiator style, which you guys saw plenty of before. This uh, Sarki down here also is plugged directly into a splitter. So the, the cord is long enough, which is great. We then have this 14 gauge, 15 foot long extension cable that runs along here. And you can see it is plugged into another one of these Sarki Heaters. This one I don't even have it on at the moment. Um, it's in the mid 40s today. Uh, it's a little cool in here. It's around 70, 71 degrees, but it's not too bad. So now, in addition to those two main heater um, cords that we run in, you can see there's a there's a black one coming off this pedestal right there. Uh, and then what we do with it, I run it along through the side. It comes in through our engine room vents and then it runs into our bedroom and I'll show you how I run that through the engine room and into the bedroom. That cord then comes in through this access panel uh, from the engine room. Uh, we do run it, uh, it runs around the bed along the bottom of the bed here and ends up running this heater over here uh, which not only heats the bedroom, but also helps to heat the head as well. So the reason we have two heaters in this bedroom is just simply because it's the lowest point on the boat and it's the coldest. Um, it works really well to have two heaters in here, especially to keep that bathroom uh, a little bit warmer. Uh, it's always nice in the morning when you get up and you go into a, a warmer bathroom than uh, a bathroom that may be kind of chilly. So um, this is basically how we how we heat our boat uh and and you know we will have uh one more heater that i'll put down in the engine room pretty soon um and then i will seal up the vents but what i need to do first is to winterize our engines uh, i've already winterized our generator and i will show you a video on how we do all the winterization uh pretty soon so there you go. Uh, there's going to be a, a series of these, uh, as I said, winterizing the engines uh, and some other things. I'm going to show you how we wrap the boat, all these kind of good things uh, to prep for winter. So like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. That's really the, the best way that you can give us feedback. Uh, also, you know, happy to take a look at your comments and respond to any comments that you guys have. And if there are specific things you want to see, let us know in the comments and we'd be happy to, uh, to provide. So thanks very much. Oh, and hey, one more thing. If you are an authorized installer for Webasto or any other type of gasoline burning forced to air system for boats, give us a call. We've called pretty much everybody in the Midwest and can't get anybody to call us back. We'd like to maybe install something like that to use in emergencies and to also just use normally.